Hello, viewers. The Friends of Pioneer Cemetery welcome the invitation of the State Capitol Public Outreach Coordinator to contribute to this year's online celebration of Oregon's statehood anniversary, February 14. I'm Elizabeth Potter, speaking for the Salem Pioneer Cemetery's Volunteer Heritage Organization. In tribute to the recent centenary season of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution that removed gender from consideration in voting rights, we would like to highlight, among our notable persons at rest in the grounds, two activists in the long-sustained movement that gained women's suffrage in Oregon in 1912 and for the nation as a whole by 1920. We will begin our story with Tabitha Moffat Brown, who was officially designated the pioneer mother figure of Oregon by the 1987 Legislative Assembly. In recognition of that honor, the state affixed a bronze plaque to Tabitha's marble headstone. Tabitha and her grown children were members of a wagon train that crossed the plains to Oregon in 1846. They endured exceptional hardship in following an untested southern route into the Willamette Valley, but thrived upon their safe arrival. One important part of Tabitha's legacy was her co-founding with the Reverend Harvey Clark, a boarding school for the orphans of overland immigrants. Their school, Tualatin Academy, was the forerunner of Pacific University. The year 2020 was the 100th anniversary of formal certification of the 19th Amendment. In 2020, two chapters of the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution came together to give further recognition to Tabitha and her heritage. Tabitha Moffat Brown Chapter and Salem's Shemekita Chapter of the DAR jointly dedicated a plaque for the base of Tabitha's headstone that celebrates her status as the daughter of a patriot soldier of the Revolutionary War. A key part of Tabitha's legacy is made up of her descendants in varied family branches. Mary Edna Strong was Tabitha's great-granddaughter, a Salem native, an 1878 graduate of Willamette University, and a schoolteacher. In 1881, Mary married William S. Kinney, an industrialist and the youngest son of Robert C. Kinney, the Yamhill County delegate to the Oregon Constitutional Convention of 1857. William Kinney was the owner of a lumber mill and was involved in the canning industry centered in Astoria. When her husband, William, died, Mary took up management of his business interests and raised four sons. In 1912, the year Oregon women achieved suffrage, Mary was presiding over the Astoria Women's Suffrage Club. In 1920, the year the 19th Amendment was formally certified, she was elected to represent Clatsop County in the Oregon House of Representatives. She served in the House in 1921 as the only woman in either legislative chamber that year. And it was in that year that Mary successfully promoted a bill that gave women the right to share jury duty 
along with men. She was elected to the state senate and served in 1923 and 1925 legislative sessions. Mary died in 1938 and was interred in the cemetery where her great-grandmother and other forebears were at rest. In 1943, during World War II, the Liberty ship SS Mary E. Kinney was launched from the Portland shipyards for service in the Pacific. Olive England Enright was a slightly older contemporary of Mary Kinney. She was married at the age of 18 to William A. Stanton, Salem's pioneer carriage and wagon maker. In her 30s, Olive was graduated from the Willamette University School of Music with a baccalaureate degree. She earned distinction in the university's annals when she became the first female graduate of Willamette's Law School in 1898 at the age of 47. Following the death of her first husband in 1901, Olive married the tailor, John F. Enright, and moved to Portland. Olive England Enright was a dedicated suffragist. Early in 1912, she came to Salem to speak on the voting franchise at the Women's Christian Temperance Union Hall. It was in a subsequent election on November 5, 1912, that a narrow majority of the state's male voters approved granting women the right to vote. The campaign for woman suffrage in Oregon had been decades long. It would take another seven years before Congress passed the 19th Amendment in 1919, and that would extend the franchise nationwide. It would take yet one more year before the amendment was ratified by the necessary number of states and the results were certified. To learn more about these and other figures of interest in Oregon history, log on to our website, salempioneercemetery.org. Explore the biographical database and other features of the site.